I'm Dr. Bob, the drugless doctor, with another Get to Know video for you. And today, we're going to talk about celiac disease and gluten. And so many times, those two terms are used interchangeably. But you know what, really? They're almost two separate entities. They have done studies and found that there are genes that are really responsible for celiac disease. 41% of the people in the United States alone have a sensitivity with this gene but only 1% actually have the symptoms of celiac disease, which is massive digestive distress. So what is really causing the problem, and what exactly is gluten, and what does it do, and where can you find it? Gluten is a protein, and it's found in grains like wheat, rye, oats, and barley. Gluten itself, when you have digestive distress, is being attacked by cells called T cells or killer cells and your body's trying to literally help you. So let's just say that you have celiac disease. You probably by now know what foods you really need to stay away from. But unfortunately for us today in our society, there is so much processed food that you're going to literally find gluten and gluten-like substances even in items like caramel coloring which comes from barley. And those of you that drink alcohol, especially beer, could have a gluten sensitivity because of the gluten that's found in barley. So gluten being a protein is easily attacked because of digestive distress. What happens to you is when you eat one of these items and there's a flag that shows up, when I say a flag, a warning signal, your body will go into alert. But so many times, even in my practice, I'll have individuals that'll come in and they'll have fogginess to their memory. They're really bloated. They have digestive distress. They have headaches. And they might say, Dr. Bob, I'm having some challenges. What do you think? So traditionally what I have done is I'll have them fill out a diet journal. I want to see what they're eating on a regular basis. I had one individual who was suffering with iron deficient anemia. Uh, iron deficient anemia. And he had it for a long time and nobody could figure out what's going on. So I asked him to fill out a diet sheet. And every day he was having whole wheat. And his wife came in with him during the consultation and she was so proud of the fact that he had whole wheat every day. So there's two issues here. Gluten itself acts as a glue and it literally plugs up the little villi in your intestines and it stops you from absorbing nutrients and minerals. So what's happening in his particular case, he could not absorb iron. So he had iron deficient anemia caused by eating whole wheat bread that his wife learned because of media and reading magazines that's good for him versus eating white bread. Within 120 days, his anemic condition had improved. He was very excited to say the least. We also have individuals that are coming to the office that will have pain and they'll have actually some sinus challenges because gluten will cause allergic type of challenges inside of a person's body. So many of you eat oatmeal every day because you've been told that oatmeal will lower your cholesterol. And you know what? Oatmeal will lower your cholesterol. But you also may start having some digestive distress because of the oatmeal. So what I'd like you to do right now, this is a very simple test. It's called the Dr. Bob Squeeze Your Wrist Test. See, it is. What I'd like you to do while you're watching me is just gently squeeze your wrist. Do you feel bone or do you feel a layer of fluid between the outer skin and your wrist itself? If you feel that layer of fluid and you eat oatmeal on a regular basis, what I'd like you to do, just for a month or so, is go off the oatmeal. Why? Because oatmeal has gluten in it. And it could be causing your body to have what we would call a histamine reaction, causing water retention, causing that wrist not to be really tight because you're holding on to extra fluid. They estimate that over 40% of the people in our society today also have a gluten sensitivity, have a crossover reaction. That means if you're having problems with gluten, you possibly could having some challenges with a milk protein called casein also. So I need you to think about different foods that you are actually eating. How do we diagnose if you have celiac disease or not? Well, the most scientific way to find out if you have celiac disease is actually have a biopsy of your intestines because the little villi will actually be gone. And even if you stay away, research has said, from gluten for a time period, oftentimes those villi might not grow back. So that is full-blown celiac disease. But what I see in my practice, I have so many people that have gluten sensitivity. 
What does that mean exactly? Well, you'll find out by eliminating gluten and gluten type foods from your diet. That would include wheat. Now there is wheat in a lot of substances today that you might not be aware of. I even mentioned to you earlier about caramel coloring. So there are often food dyes that are made with barley. So I need you to really start analyzing what you're eating. Personally, what I would do, I would go on green vegetables. I would go on vegetables that do not have starch on them. And if you have a particular food that you like, add it slowly back to your diet, maybe in a two or three week time period. This is called the elimination diet. So if you have symptoms, you wake up with a headache, you're bloated, you're not 100% and you just started feeling that way, it's very possible that you could have some digestive distress. Oftentimes, personally, and I'll see it in our practice, with individuals that may have been on some type of antibiotic, and that antibiotic, what it's going to do, it's going to alter your digestive floor inside of your intestines, and you're going to start noticing distress with wheat products. Many times I'll see it, especially in individuals who make the decision to become a vegetarian, and they go 100% eating grains, and there's a massive amount of digestive distress. We also have seen it in individuals who may have had many amalgams or mercury fillings inside of their mouth. And that mercury can actually paralyze your parotid gland that creates the digestive enzymes for all of the grains to be processed. So this is what I would do if I was you. If you have any of the symptoms I've talked about, bloating, headache, digestive distress, in any way, shape, or form, go on a green vegetable diet for a month. If your symptoms go away, slowly add some of the foods back that you may have eaten before. If you notice symptoms from those foods, I would work on minimizing or eliminating them from your diet, giving your body a chance to reheal itself. I have found from my experience that if you utilize an omega-3 fat like flax oil or even a marine oil and take up to a tablespoon a day, that will help minimize the digestive distress that you're having in your lower bowel and it will give you improvement with your gluten sensitivity. I promise you, if you make a few of these changes, you'll be glad you did.